What is up, it's a Fit Gear Hunter. I am super fired up because I have for review today, and this is just an initial review, the Haven Athletic Backpacks. As I have said on the channel and reviewed multiple times in different ways, the Haven system of bag making with compartments and accessories and thought conscientiousness when it comes to CrossFit and high intensity interval training or workouts and power lifting, all of those things, there is not another bag on the planet. And that is still true today and even more so with these backpacks. So if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I'm just gonna open this up while we talk because this is it when it comes to bags. So I tested this bag when they first had a prototype, when it was first sort of coming out. Since that time, because they were mastering and finalizing the prototype and they added the, they took the regular original backpack and added a small variant backpack and they were continuing to test and continuing to make it perfect. I've been without a backpack and I tell the owners all the time like, this is like torture. You can't just show me something like this. And I absolutely mean that. This is not sponsored. They aren't giving me anything. I'm hoping, you know, maybe they'll let me use a backpack for a little while. But this, in a backpack version, this is like a sort of a, a mere concept idea to the Haven large duffel and small duffel. This can't be unseen. This can't be unknown. So I'm gonna tell you right now, I went on a search for other comparable backpacks, any backpack that might be similar that I could just use until this came out. And I'm not kidding. I searched, I mean, there are a bunch of expensive backpacks and they're all the same dumb design. They're all just like big pouches and maybe there's like a side pouch. Maybe there's something else. And I have been using the Velitz Storm backpack, which is just now on Kickstarter, and it's got side pouches, and it's got the best of any that I've studied and all the research that I did, the best execution for that type of bag. But it's not the same. So what we're gonna do, this video is gonna have a lot of content that you can take advantage of or take advantage of just small pockets of it. So there's timestamps down below because I want it to be simple and you really can just sort of look at the bag, look at how you can pack it and hear the summary. And I also want you to be able to see size comparisons. So there's timestamps down below for each part. Now, what am I gonna look at? We're gonna look at the size comparison, just like physically look at the size comparison between the small duffel and the large duffel. The small duffel is 26 liters. The large duffel is 37 liters. If you compare that to the, oh, I just said duffel. Dag it. So the small backpack is 26 liters. The large backpack is 37 liters. If you compare that to the large duffel at 50 liters, you are cutting down some size to go from large duffel to large backpack. And it's the small duffel is 30 liters. So it's similar in size to the small backpack. So in this review, we're going to look at the large backpack when it compares side by side with the large duffel. And we're gonna look at sort of the ins and outs. We're gonna look at the large backpack relative to the small duffel. Then we're gonna look at the small backpack relative to the small duffel. So I wanted just to have like, here's all of it because they are going on a Kickstarter. And so I just felt like, well, I'm gonna show you everything. I'm just gonna give you the full spectrum so that you can like have every piece of information you could possibly need to feel comfortable or confident in what you would want to Kickstarter, Kickstarter back or whatever to get it ordered. So. I don't actually even know the price of these. I reached out to the owner because I just didn't ask it early enough, but I think that's even better that I don't know the price because I would say 270 minimum for the large backpack and like 230 to 250 for the small backpack. I don't know what that cost. I have been using the Velitz backpack and I'm gonna compare this in the summary in concept, not in detail. And this is $280, I think, new, or if you get a specialty fabric version, it's 300 to get all the primary accessories and the backpack. So we're gonna look at all those different things. Take what you want, use what you want, appreciate what you want, but let's dive in. So we're gonna look at first at the size comparison, looking at the ins from the outside and then from the inside of the large backpack and small backpack. And then we're gonna compare 
all those different things. And then we're gonna come back together. There'll be a little section on just like a sample packing of the backpack so you can see like how normal things I have a size 12 shoe. So that doesn't fit and hasn't fit as well in other bags. We'll see how it fits here. And then we'll come back for a summary. All right, so here are the two side by side. So we're gonna just sort of do a little bit of side size comparison so you can see if I didn't have it unzipped, which is annoying. You can see the size difference from the literal side. And you can tell, you know, like obviously the large is larger, um, but you can see sort of the overall size difference, the overall thickness difference, just looking at all angles um, and get it a little bit clearer. New zippers. So that is that if you look at them on top of each other i guess that's it that's all you need to see one thing i really like is that they are exactly the same through and through they have all the same pockets just everything is smaller or larger now let's look at the size difference between the large uh, backpack and the large duffel and the small duffel and then the small backpack and the small duffel we'll just stick to that Okay, so this is a pure size difference. So you can see the overall length differences. I'll show you the height differences in a second. Um, the overall width differences. So this is a little bit wider, nice and smooth, because obviously it's a backpack. And then if you were to lay this on its side, it's gonna sit up like that and you got a lot skinnier. So you got rounded edges here on the backpack. You have sharp edges, a little more rigid design here. It still has some solidity to this uh, shape, which I actually really like, but um, it is not as rigid, not as just sort of overall bulky as what you get on the large duffel. Now, if you compare the backpack to the small duffel, there's the real difference. I mean, you can see that overall size-wise, small duffel has just visibly less size than the large backpack. And if you turn them on their sides, you can see that it has about the same height. So similar this is a little bit taller um, a little bit not as long obviously by a couple of inches and then the overall width is about the same they're sitting up actually almost flush with each other um, so maybe it sort of irons out in the wash um, between the two differences now let's look at the small okay so now the small backpack relative to the small duffel so you can see it is wider. Uh, obviously, if this was sort of overlapped, yeah, it'd be just flat out wider, um, about the same height, same length. Um, and then if you turn it on the side, you're gonna see that the small duffel is a little bit taller. Um, we're not looking here, just the exact cubic capacity differences between the two, but you know they're gonna actually probably hold about the same stuff, just a different overall layout. Now let's compare the layouts. The main thing with both is you're gonna get um, the exact same overall design when it comes to the backpacks because they are just you know smaller or larger versions of each other. Um, this is really cool. It's got the mesh side, so it's got full ventilation. You could obviously put in um, filthy knee pads here or sloppy, sweaty hand grips there. You have a little side pocket here, little handle there. Um, this is just sort of the shoe entrance pouch, so you can get in at your shoes without having to go in through the main portion of the backpack, which we'll look at in a second. Obviously full padded across the back, full straps. You got all these sort of loops that you could throw on a carabiner, which is what I do um, for looping in a water bottle. And speaking of water bottles, you even have this side pouch, which has got a nice sort of stretchy, it's almost neoprene mesh on it. For a water bottle holder you have these little hooks here which I you know I think they, they're gonna be releasing a bunch of different accessory parts so you have these little sort of banded hooks here and then we got to look at the main part oh the other thing I didn't mention was you have this little hideaway pocket here which you could put a laptop in obviously um, 
I can't tell if it has, a, oh, it's floating. It doesn't have a pad, but it's not actually gonna hit the bottom. It's actually floating above. So it, it actually ends about an inch before the bottom, which is great, because it's basically the same as a pad. Um, you could actually probably slide um, a weight sleeve in there if you wanted to throw some weight and just do some ruck packing. Um, so this is how it looks on the inside. So notice what ha just happened. So I'm not open this, opening the main pouch from this side, I'm actually opening the main pouch from the shoulder strap side. So it is gonna go like that and boom, there you have it. That is the main sort of overall layout. You have this sort of soft cushiony here and I'm gonna look at it, you know, filled in a second. So then you have two large boxes, two small boxes, and then obviously this is for, you know, supplements, weight belt. We'll look at a sample idea in a second. And you can see that this, is obviously not as deep here as it is here because it accommodates the large pocket here for your uh, sweaty items that you want to put in a separate pocket all together. Um, the thing that's the same are the layouts of the bags. So this is the small and that is the large. So you can see that it is the exact same sort of overall style and design. Let me check the cameras. You can see both. Um, it's just a smaller version. So everything is just like a mirror image. Oh, I forgot to mention there's these, you know, one mesh pocket here, one sealed pocket here, two mesh pockets up here. So you can put in all sorts of things. I tend to keep, you know, uh, sensors in here, batteries for those said sensors, um, maybe some just smaller items in here. I don't, I don't tend to keep, you know, in the large duffel, I can keep um, jump ropes here. So that's actually what a unique benefit of large over small is have a little bit more flexibility and options, but there you go, it's the exact same. And if you were to compare it to the overall spatial capacity of the large duffel, if you just wanna get a side-by-side -side comparison, I apologize, there's some excess stuff in here because I am testing different backpacks and different things, and so there's some things in transit, but I just put it all in one little big extra ugly pouch. So this is the large pouch, obviously, um, duh, and these are the smaller pouches. So you have this little sleeve here. One large, you can see beneath there, that's where the shoe bin goes. So under here is a place where you can shove your shoes. And then you have two small pockets, a medium and a large, and then an extra large, and then a little sleeve. And then, so you can see the overall layout differences. So it does have a different schematic, obviously. No rocket science there, but um, you know, so this would hold smaller things in this. The large duffel is really perfect if you have like a bunch of little accessories, a bunch of accessories, period, and you're just gonna go from little to medium to big to ultra big or whatever you wanted to. The backpack is really more perfect for the essential workout gear because it has compartments so you can fit it all in and it does the job perfectly. Maybe it's not for somebody carrying three different supplements and a weight belt running shoes, CrossFit shoes, and lifting shoes. So not gonna fit all that in there. Not gonna fit all that in here, technically from what I just said. But anyway, you have a bit, you know, a little bit more of a shot with the large duffel. So that's what the large duffel looks like. And let's just put it like that. If you were to compare the overall design and layout of the small duffel versus the, I mean, the small duffel versus the small backpack, this is what you're gonna get, you know? So it's the same basic thing. So you get like a, a miniature version of what the large duffel has as far as a compartment set up and design. Um, you still have the shoe canister underneath there, although I have found it to not fit shoes, so you have to put your shoes sort of horizontally here. Um, but the overall design is the same. Now, if I was choosing between these two, I'll just tell you out of the gate, I would absolutely choose the small backpack, and that's what we're looking at. This is the small backpack, just so there's no confusion. I would choose this all day long because it's got a full shoe compartment here. You put it in there, you'll come out the top a little bit. It still works fine. It's still fantastic, especially if you have, I have a size 12 uh, shoe. So I would use this. This would be my go-to all day long. And this might even be the most ideal sort of size of these two packs. Um, but large is always better, you know, so you just have more options. And the large backpack is really efficient and perfect. So let's look at a, an example of how these might look with stuff in them. So there you have it. There is every comparison under the sun when you come to size. I just, I can't say enough. This, this solution is so much better than the large duffel and small duffel even is for me because throwing it on your back is so much better than having it swinging around your side. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at the packing of it. And I'm not gonna tell you 
Well, I'm, we're going to pack one of the bags. It's not the bag that I thought I was packing when I originally packed it because I just wasn't paying attention. And then we're going to look at the other bag packed. And so just take that for what it's worth and let's dive in to a sample packing. All right, so here you have it. You have a basic layout and design. So I didn't, you know, it's not rocket science. You know, these fit the shoes here. This is a size 12 and I actually have an inch. So this is probably the biggest capacity shoe that shoe space that Haven has done to date. Uh, buckles, a couple of chest straps. You got the sensor down below, plus some tape. I would probably, I need to get, I'm running low on tape, so I got more tape there. Um, airflow, as well as headphones. I'm not even really filling up all the spaces. Chalk, this is like extra sensors in case one of them dies. Um, wrist wraps, weight belt, and um, jump rope, and then back up, hand things. But in, in, in essence, what I probably would leave in here or use in here almost all the time is gonna be these, the weight belt, buckles, chest strap, and these components here. So I probably would actually, this is just an example, I probably will take some of that stuff out and just be like clean and simple. Plus, um, I really do like the Velites hand wraps and they basically go in their own little pouch, which I'm gonna strap to the outside to one of those, um, those loops on the outside so it just sort of flops around because I don't feel like shoving it in here. Um, you know, and in simple terms, I probably would just do this where it'd be like, take all this excess stuff out and then that would be that. And you know, maybe I would, maybe, maybe I would, maybe I would shove them in there because there's just ample room, plenty of room. The problem in some of these ways, um, some of these things is that the wrist straps get sweaty and the chest straps get sweaty, which means I probably need to figure out a way on the outside to hang them after a workout before I shove them back after they dry. Um, because I don't like balling something up if it's all sweaty and putting it in there because it will eventually discolor or seep into that and I just don't like that. So that is a sample of how you could pack this bag and how well it fits shoes, how well it fits weight belt and all these other accessories. One thing I forgot to mention is you could obviously, I'm so sick of this cord floating down. I mean, I'm, I'm so sorry if it's just dangling in front of everybody's faces. Um, so you, obviously you could put the hand wraps and the chest uh, strap here after it gets sweaty and it's got the little vented pouches and things like that. I still kind of want to throw it on the outside of the bag because I don't like anything absorbing anywhere, even if there is vented pouches, that sort of thing. But this is also the thing to see is that I didn't even use this. I haven't even touched on this little area. I do like all of it being in one area. So like all of it on the inside. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how, if that changes as I use it. Okay. One thing I just realized in that last little shot is I had packed the small backpack. I thought that was the large backpack because it had more than enough size and space for like everything. So I wanted to do a video of what you could see. So here you see you have like two extra inches on the end there for the shoe canister. There's plenty of like extra head space here or space there, depth space on both up here. So they hold the, um, the barbell brackets really well and just lots more space here. So easily can throw in the Velites hand wraps and the weight belt. I was, a, you know, I put a little journal there, but there's more room here. And the thing that you would obviously that I didn't put in the last pack is an outfit or clothes, like something to wear. So you obviously could put clothes on top here, could put clothes on top here, could move the weight belt to over here and put the shoes on top and then have more pocket of a space for clothes here. But this is the large backpack with that same content. I did throw this in there, but I'm gonna take it out so you can see how much room is in the shoe area um, because this is just much more roomy. I think the large backpack would be the absolute way to go just for flexibility because you could put a change of clothes in there and rearrange how you do things because you're really not limited on space. That's all I wanted to share. All right, in summary, there's, I'll repeat what I said in the beginning, there's not another backpack like this. And in my feeling, there is nothing like this because in my personal use from the first time I tested it to the last number of days and testing it now, there's just nothing that compares. Like large double, small duffel was like, you know, innovation 1.0, this is innovation 4.0 because this is 
absolutely everything I could want. I mean, unless it's going to do the bar muscle ups for me. Yeah, I don't think the backpack's doing that. But I would say, I'm going to say my one critique, besides the zippers taking some time to break in, the zippers sometimes are a little bit like tough because they're really strong zippers. So they're super durable, but they're hard to unzip. The other thing I've told the owners multiple times is I don't like the top being the bottom or the bottom being the top. I just don't like that. It just sort of conceptually goes against my brain. I've only used, I think I tested it for a week plus originally, and I've had this for a week now. I still just think, ah, just make it on the top, the top, but it is still effectively like, you know, fully capable. So if I was looking at bags, and I've said this before, I said, you know, th there's nothing like the large duffel and the small duffel. Those are worth every penny of dollars that you want to throw at them. and. And they are more ideal for more size. So like the large duffel would be the one I would primarily look at. I wouldn't probably look at the small duffel unless you just really want small capacity. But the large duffel you can just put in supplements, weight belts, multiple shoes, it just fits a lot more. But for true convenience without much sacrifice in size, I would go with the large backpack over and over and over again. And this is what I would want to use for the rest of my life. The small backpack, on the flip side was surprisingly everything I need to, like what I'm holding up now. It's the small backpack. It's hefty and big, and it's, it's, it's not a major difference in size from 37 liters to 26 liters, but it just works so well. The fact that I packed the small, the small backpack first and my shoes fit in there, I was like, oh man, this is so roomy. This is the most roomy shoe thing they've ever had. And I didn't realize it was the small variant shows you that this small variant is capable of like a lot of people's needs. It's really capable. So whereas in the initial large duffel, small duffel, I really came out and said, I wouldn't look at the small duffel unless you really want small stuff because the capacity issues were limiting. Here I say, it's a preference. It is more of a preference. I lean towards large just so you have the space if you want to use it because these are also super light and I didn't test them on a scale, that sort of thing. But that is my thought. That is my comparison. And just giving it sort of sideline comparison to the Velite Storm backpack with the two primary accessories, which is this wad bag on the outside. And then there's like what they call a toiletry bag on the inside. But to me, it's like wad bag part two. So this is a very well designed. It does feel thicker and heavier. It is for sure heavier, but it also feels just thicker, both the fabric and the overall structure to it feels thicker, so that's what gives it the extra weight. Um, when I got these backpacks, I just thought, man, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to compete with the Velite Storm backpack because I'm used to it, I'm comfortable with it. It does have enough compartmentalization through the outside extremity type packs or the toiletry bag on the inside that I can accomplish somewhat of that sort of compartmentalization. There's no comparison. I would never go back tragically because this is a really great bag and i will say if you look at it in other bags this is the second best bag on the market today and i did a ton of research on all the backpack manufacturers all the different you know people all of it every crossfit backpack every weightlifting backpack every sort of you know military gear backpack i looked at all of them and there's nothing that compared at the time to this and they're going to make some compartmentalization so this is even going to get better um but this I would say is like for like a, 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 probably more for somebody who's like out packing, like out traveling in the wilderness for a long period of time, because it just feels more solid. And um, I think it has a, a even higher level uh, water resistance, waterproof material on the outside. But for, for everybody in the universe, in most day-to-day -day life, there is just nothing like this. And I have, again, coming from loving the Velites, this is, is just so much better. Um, and it's it's different, so it's also not just better, but it's also just different and more my preference. But if you are a CrossFitter and you like compartmentalization, you find the value in that, being able to see what's in your bag because everything's gray, so you just you can see what's there. It is a fantastic solution. So Kickstarter is starting. I don't know what the price is as of the time I recorded this video, so that'll be just sort of exciting. Is it 300, is it 320? I think that would be probably the upper echelon. I think a great price would be 250. If it's less than that, buy two, because it's just that good. It's the Figure Hunter Haven backpack, large and small, coming out now on Kickstarter. Thanks for watching.